In today's video, we're gonna be focusing on the SS5 Crosslink Grill Light Bar for your 2018 and newer JL, as well as your 2020 and newer Gladiator. Now, Dive Dynamics has been creating some of the best lighting options for your off-road, your on-road, any vehicle that needs more lighting, which is everyone on the market. We've got two separate installations, so I'm not sure which one is gonna be released before the other. Two separate installs to make sure we get all the lighting hooked up on our Jeep outside. In today's video, we're gonna be focusing on the SS5 Crosslink Grill Light Bar. So what you're gonna get in this kit is four combination SS5 lights. Now, you can either go with the Sport or the Pro, depending on the light output that you want. The the built-in heat sinks, all of the machining, the holes that you can actually link them with, as well as that molded into place Deutsch connector, which I don't know why, but I will tell you is one of my favorite things on these lights. If you guys have ever had to build harnesses, you know that by having a lead that sticks out eight inches, you've got to find a way to tuck that away. Here you don't, it plugs right into it. Dive Dynamics builds in a lot of lighting technology, which includes a selectable backlight on here. That doesn't require you to get out and change things. It just requires a quick input of power and you can change the backlighting on all of these lights simultaneously. So let's unbox all this and get started. All right guys, so the first step to install the Crosslink light bar is to remove the filler panel in between. Grab yourself a flathead screwdriver and just pull the inside section out and then you can remove it. So this kit does say to remove the front grill. I'm not sure why, I'm, I might be biting my tongue for this later on. I'm not gonna pull mine off because the under the sun insert mixed with the camera, it does make it a little bit more tedious. But we do have that fill panel removed and the next step then is to drill out actually those two top holes where we had those push pins in. So this is the hole you're gonna drill out. We've got our 3 8 bit. They require 25 60 fourths. We're gonna see if we can make this work. I don't have a 25 60 fourths bit. We just need a 60 fourth of an inch, boys. There you go. So 3 8 will work and then you just wallow it out a little bit. So we'll do that on the other side. That didn't take too long. All right guys, so we're gonna install these rib nuts here. Now what this will basically do is when you tighten this up, you can see the slotted section. This is gonna pinch from behind. So this is gonna basically encapsulate the top of the frame rail inside two pieces of metal to give you a nut in the frame that you didn't already have. So they include this extra bolt, a nut and a washer. And what you're gonna be able to do is kind of make your own homebrew rib nut kit. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you get this all the way to the edge so that this tightens to the bottom the washer, and then the nut. Now what that's gonna do is you're gonna put this in the frame rail and you're just gonna tighten this top one. Now as you're tightening that top one, what that's gonna do is pull from the bottom here and capture this inside. You wanna make sure there's good engagement on the thread so it pulls nice and cleanly. And also when you're done with this, it's not real sloppy and you can still spin the thread. So these are actually really important and you wanna make sure you do this right or else we are gonna be having ourselves one heck of a headache. So let's, uh, let's do this right and we'll get it installed. We've got two washers and our nut insert. Let's go ahead and set this into the frame rail, like so. Make sure it's fully seated down. We actually got a larger nut too, so we're gonna put that on there, turn our ratchet to on, and start tightening. It's a little bit hard in the beginning, and then it loosens up. But what you wanna do is also make sure that your box wrench down there is keeping it flat. And let me, uh, let me do this, because I don't know why I'm struggling when I have a longer extension, too. Like, how stupid, you know? Like, what a freaking idiot. Like, I have a longer extension right in here somewhere. I don't need to be struggling, but yet, here I am. Longer extension. So, you're just holding the box wrench to keep that nut still, and then tightening this. And this is going to basically create a self-captured nut in your frame rail that you don't have to, because there's no way to get in there to reach in and like hold a nut in your frame rail unless you pull off your whole bumper. So there you go, that's tightened. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna back this out just like that, set that down and check this out. So we pull this whole assembly out and our rib nut stays in there. So we are gonna remove this outer 5 8 bolt that holds on the bumper bracket. So I'm just gonna grab a 5 8 socket, put it on my 3 8 ratchet, and get this out of the way. We're gonna get this pulled off. So these are specific left and right. This is the passenger side because it still has the ability here to retain this retention clip. So that's gonna go on. You're gonna put your frame bolt back into there and then just snug it up. This little setup is gonna go right into the top. So we're gonna get that snugged up and then we're gonna tighten the outside of the frame rail bolt. But first, I wanna snug this because it does seem to like pull it a little bit. So let's get that in. Okay, that's nice and tight. Let's see if this clips back in. I'm really hoping it does. Maybe it's not meant for that. 
Yeah, it is. Look at that. That is sick, guys. I can tell you, that's why I like diode. They even put a little standoff here, so they machined an entire new bracket just to make sure that that can clip on. That's what you want in a company. The next thing is to loosely attach this bracket onto either side. You'll know it's the right side because the diode dynamics will be facing forward. So you do have this, this open hole there is if you just run a single mount, but since we are running the crosslink, what we're gonna do is get this lined up, drop those into there like so. Sorry, my arm is kind of blocking. And we're just gonna put these flange nuts underneath. And now we're gonna have to adjust this too accordingly because this can slide here just based upon how far the lights need to stick out. All right guys, so we've got a pretty good idea of what's going on. We are gonna be looking at the lights with the logo up to the top, turning it to the side and using our back cross links. Now what's important is that this curve side with the logo goes towards the back or towards these heat sinks. And then you're gonna use the included bolts to link these together. These use a four millimeter Allen key. So we got that set aside and we're gonna try and get these tightened enough by hand. So then what's gonna happen is this will go on here. Yeah, you can't lay it on the table. I wanna pull it as far back as I can, snug them up as much by hand. Then this might take a little bit because you're gonna to have to tighten each of these. So one thing you want to check before you get all this way by tightening all these is these little lines in that arrow on the SS5 indicate the curvature of the bar. So you've got one, two, three, and four. That first little notch is going to make them all straight. The second one will make it almost mocking like a 50 inch curved light bar. And then three and four will be much more aggressive. So we're probably going to put it at notch number two. So it has a little bit of a curvature, but I'm going to get all these mounted up and then get that done. All right guys, so now it's time to attach the end mount base. Make sure the larger opening is towards the top. This other one is just threaded. We're gonna put that on using the three provided Allen key screws. I'm just gonna put those in there. So we're gonna fully tighten all three of these of this base while we have it like this and then repeat the same process on the other side. You're gonna put this bracket in through there and then your longer bolt will go through and there's a threaded section. This is gonna use a five millimeter Allen key. It says not to tighten this up, just get it snug. So I've kind of got these mocked out here. These are the connectors. So as you can see, this is the way they should be laid out. And this is going to be the passenger side. So passenger side is gonna get this connection from the wiring harness that's included. This will be light, 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 and light. So four of them, I actually lost a seal here. This isn't too hard to do, but it took me just a second here to figure out. This one's gonna go into here. You'll hear a small click, or with that one I actually didn't. We'll jump on to the next. There's the small click. That'll click in. Connector. That one in. And that last one. Oh, that's a little, little tight. All right, guys, so we're ready to put the light bar into place. But I just want to get this top one started. And then come over here and get this top one started. We did leave everything loose yet, so it all, is all still loose just to make sure we have enough clearance for everything. So these are gonna be with those 10 millimeter bolts. So I've got both of those top ones started. So there we go. So we got the base brackets tightened down. Now the last step is just to tighten these three on the side. This will give us the adjustment kind of left. Well, actually we can tighten these and this will give us more finer adjustment, but we're gonna get these three tightened and then tighten the five mil. That's one's coming up and one's coming down. So we're about to start the wiring on this and it's not too complicated. It's actually pretty easy. We do have the factory Rubicon wiring or the lock factory Rubicon wiring. We have the factory auxiliary switches. So they actually include this harness here, which will replace the included switch panel. So they make it with a connector at the end, and this is gonna easily be able to replace that. So we can set our switch aside, and we're gonna be using this harness here, which has a blue and a yellow wire. The yellow wire is gonna be the main power for the lights, and then the blue is just gonna be for the backlighting. So these are just trigger wires, and they're just gonna be triggering the relay. The only other things that you have to connect here are the positive and negative off of the relay that's gonna go right to the battery. And then ultimately this end Deutsch connector right to the light bar. All right guys, so I had to do two things to get that ran. Take out a 10 millimeter bolt up here and then one push pin on the inner fender liner and it just tucks right down in. And you can see we ran it real close to our factory fog light wiring. I'm gonna throw a couple zip ties on here and that's gonna be good. We have it plugged in and we're ready to wire it up. Now what we've got going on here is we have all four of them turned on with the backlighting. There are nine different colors. And the way you change that is just go in and tap the switch a few times. As long as you double tap it on and off within a few seconds, Seconds, it changes the color and then when you turn it on for normal it'll keep that color I think that's awesome and you can see I've got the red here to match the Rubicon red accents I absolutely love the way that looks and it looks killer just as an accent piece to the Jeep the real striking 
looking for is the actual light output. We've got four of these. Are they on? nine diodes each that are producing an absolute ton of lighting. Now we plan on doing some off-roading videos as well, some nighttime driving. I will say that these are gonna very much help when we're driving in the snow, sleet, any sort of bad conditions, or just on some of those longer treks. But overall, you can get this done in a couple hours in your driveway and very simple to wire and honestly I'm just thrilled with how cool they look. I almost think they're going to work also with the bumpers I have coming in too because this still notches out and gives me enough room down there for that recessed bumper that I have coming in. We'll have to wait and see. If not, I'll fab up some brackets to make sure I can keep these on. Until next time though, this has been an absolutely awesome video. You guys need to go check out Diode Dynamics for sure. Shout out to them for hooking up this channel and hooking up my Jeep. We're going to be installing the pillar lights here pretty soon so this whole thing is going to be decked out and we can't wait. Until next time, my name is Matt with Dirt Road Cred. Get out there and earn yours.